Crash Team Rumble is seemingly going to be a brand new kind of game for the Crash franchise. However, will it have single player mode or will it be exclusively multiplayer? Well, I've been digging and I believe I found some evidence to suggest that it is possible we will be getting some form of a single player mode. Let's talk about it. What's up guys, Canadian Guy here, and today we are going to be exploring multiple ideas about Crash Team Rumble, but with a primary focus on single player mode. Now, of course, there is a lot that we don't know about Crash Team Rumble, and Activision hasn't given too many details beyond the premise of the game, but there are some details that we can explore to try and figure out some interesting concepts and ideas. For starters, we actually are gonna be looking at the American Trademark Site, or the USPTO. We have explored this website before, but I'll summarize it quickly for those who don't know. The USPTO is where American trademarks are applied. You can see what names have been taken for brands along with products and goods that they are going to be applying for for that specific brand. So if you were to apply the Crash Bandicoot trademark, you would list the goods that the Crash Bandicoot trademark would be producing, like software video game discs, downloads, and cartridges, along with potential merch, like t-shirts, backpacks, and more. You wouldn't apply for a mark and ask for, let's say, a Crash Bandicoot uh, car. <laughs> I mean, if you're buying a Crash Bandicoot branded car, you're just asking the universe for you to be put into an accident. So over on the USPTO website, I found that Crash Team Rumble actually got its own trademark separated from the initial Crash Bandicoot trademark. When we look at the two sections of these marks, it potentially reveals two very important details about the game. Actually, technically there's more than two, but the other details are, I suppose, basically assumed. Let's start with the very first line. Downloadable video game software, downloadable video and computer game programs, video game cartridges and discs, downloadable virtual goods, namely computer programs featuring game currency and consumables in the nature of play enhancing features for use in online virtual worlds. Okay, that seems pretty uh, generic, right? It's a video game that sounds like it's gonna have microtransactions, typical for free to play games, right? Actually, in the case of this specific game, there is kind of a revealing detail, specifically video game cartridges and discs. Now remember, we still do not have any confirmation as to what Crash Team Rumble is in terms of how the game's ecosystem is going to work. Is it free to play? Will it be physical? Is it purely multiplayer? Or is there a single player element? Well, here's the thing. If the game's ecosystem is free to play, why would they be asking trademarks for printing the game to a disc? Free to play games don't ever really do that. So the fact that the game is being printed to a disc would suggest to me that the game won't be entirely free to play. Time out, hold up. Doesn't the company applying for these marks just plaster a large amount of goods that the mark potentially could cover just in case? Couldn't this just be a template across the board for all games? Actually, not typically. Let's take a look at the marks for another Activision title that is purely free to play. Call of Duty Warzone and compare it to Crash Team Rumble's marks. Notice how there is absolutely no mention of the game being printed to a disc, no physical editions, nothing at all. Well, it just so happens that Warzone is a digital only title that has not been printed to disc to this date. Now let's compare it to a regular Call of Duty trademark, specifically Call of Duty Vanguard, which is a game that you have to pay for and has physically printed discs. You can see that it follows a similar path to Crash Team Rumble. Both digital and physical media are mentioned in their marks and goods. Let's look at Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. We can see the declaration of the game being printed to disc and being downloadable, but no mention of online currency or microtransactions. These marks seem to reflect that once again, there was no intention to have Warzone ever printed to disc, and there was no intention of any microtransactions in Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. So looking back at the Crash Team Rumble mark, seeing that it says 
physical discs and digital downloads, it seems to suggest that there is intention to print this game onto a disc, which actually has more implications than you might even initially think, but we'll get to that later. However, beyond the USPTO, is there any other evidence to suggest that the game can be physically bought? It turns out there is. Kind of. For starters, there has been some reports about an alleged release date and price point for Crash Team Rumble. It's coming from the totally reliable retail site of hit.co.uk? Yeah, this isn't really a good start. So this website is a retail site and is claiming that the game is going to be coming out on April 4th, 2023 for 64 UK pounds. So already we are on a path of this retail posting being questionable at best. Then in case you wanted to be even more confused, yet another site is also claiming that Crash Team Rumble is coming out, but about $15 Canadian and that the game would be coming out in March of 2023. However, in the details of this posting, it's claiming that its price is not final and that it's only for depository purposes and that when the game's actual price is revealed, the deposit would then be taken off for final sale. So which retail posting is true? Well, let's just say neither of them are likely going to be true. We have 11 seconds of gameplay thus far for Crash Team Rumble. We literally timed it. 11 in-game gameplay seconds. And we have no details beyond the basic premise and concept of the game. So the game apparently coming out in the next couple of months is going to be very, very, very unlikely. Now, if you're enjoying the video so far and you want to stay up to date on everything Crash Team Rumble, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned because I will be covering this game along with a bunch of other nostalgic platformers like Spyro, Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, you name it. Anyway, back to the video. Now, while both of these retail slates are likely full of it, there is something that can be gleaned from the fact that there are postings retail wise for people to be able to actually pre-order the game physically which implies and supports the theory that the game will have some form of a physical release, which kind of negates the idea of the game being completely free to play, because otherwise retail sites would have to refund everybody if they announced that the game was completely free. And let me tell you something, companies and retail sites do not want to take money and then have to take time and money to refund everybody. Trust me, they don't want to do that. So this seems to lend at least a little bit of credit to the concept that it will have a physical release. Now, why am I stressing the point about there being a physical release? Well, it's because of two reasons. The first one is the obvious. If there is a physical release, that would mean that the free to play archetype is now catapulted into question because you can't go and buy a free to play game at the store. Why would you print a game and sell it when you can download it for free? It makes zero sense. It just costs the publisher money and everybody money. But the next thing is actually in the first and second part of the marks on the USPTO for Crash Team Rumble. Take a look at this specific line here. It says, quote, providing interactive single and multiplayer online electric games via the internet and then it also says quote entertainment services namely providing online non-downloadable virtual game currency and consumables in the nature of play enhancing features for use in virtual environments created for entertainment purposes okay so there are some things here that might get some people excited Specifically, in the first point that I made, the fact that there is apparently going to be some single player aspect to the game. Now, of course, we don't know the details of the single player aspect. However, given the fact that the game is likely going to be printed, it's possible that Crash Team Rumble might have an extensive single player mode while still being focused on multiplayer. Now, some people might say, but Canadian guy, what if it's a physical print, but it's online play only? Well, I've noticed in recent years that a lot of companies, including Activision Blizzard, are pulling away from that concept, specifically with Overwatch. If you don't know, the sequel to the first Overwatch, Overwatch 2, actually is free to play. While with the first game you did have to pay a premium, it also eventually went free to play. 
Overall, the point is, is that it doesn't seem to be a part of the business model anymore for people to go and buy a multiplayer online exclusive title and have to pay money for it. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Now, in the second mark, it says that the game has currency, which is something that is typical in a free to play title, but it claims that that currency can be non downloadable, which might mean it could be earned offline, right? So I, I really want you to zoom in and notice this. The game's marks are indicating that it has both online and single player modes, but the main focus is basically online play. Virtual currency, both seemingly earnable online and or offline to use for unlocking content in a virtual environment. Doesn't this sound a lot like Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled's whole ecosystem? The game literally had both the multiplayer and single player modes, but was primarily focused on multiplayer online play. Virtual currency that was unlockable in offline and online play, and that currency being used to unlock content. If I didn't know better, these marks sound like they match CTR Nitro Fueled's system. So, if Crash Team Rumble's trademarks seem to indicate an ecosystem extremely similar to Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuels, along with both of the marks and retail online stores suggesting that the game will go on sale in a physical format, as long as everything that I have said is correct and it is having a physical print, I'm guessing that Crash Team Rumble could potentially have a single player story mode and would function similarly to Crash Team Racing Story Mode where there is a loose story that is set around set stages that has a bit of a story just for the player to be able to interact and go through. It might be like a, almost a tutorial for the player to play through before they go online to try all the different characters. Hang on though, you might think. Haven't I, as a knee Canadian guy, been saying that the game would likely be free to play? I have, and I did. But I also think that there's something that Activision could be exploring. I think it's possible the game could actually follow a similar ecosystem to Halo Infinite, where you pay for the story mode along with some bonus content and other stuff, but the multiplayer aspect of the game might be completely free to play. But that's for a different video. If you want to make sure that you don't miss it, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more Crash Team Rumble content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video and our live stream. Bye-bye!